coming up on Cardinals Insider. Until you get to a point where your feet are on the ground in that dirt, in that box, that's where the IQ develops. What's it mean to have a great baseball IQ? We learn all about it in just a moment. Plus, Albert Pujols just keeps setting records. Rocket is right. That's exactly what this was off the bat of Albert Pujols, 109 miles per hour. We give you an update on some of Albert's most recent milestones. And later? Fireworks and grilling out. Old school American 4th of July. The players share their favorite 4th of July traditions. That's all ahead on this Independence Day weekend edition of Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider, I'm Ozzie Smith. Baseball is built on strategy and athleticism. In baseball, we often refer to a baseball IQ, which is simply a player's ability to read and react to the game. Here's more on how a good baseball IQ changes things. Castillo gloves, and that's by design. That is something the Cardinals work on because if the run scores, from third before the out at second, the run counts. I think having a strong baseball IQ means uh, someone who is prepared for any situation. The more you're around the game, the more you kind of study it and just understand what's going on, I think the better it's gonna grow and the better you're gonna become. A lot of it is experience. You have to play the game, watch the game, and learn the game in order to understand the game. You know, I think anybody can read a book and imagine what it's like and visualize what it's like, but until you get to a point where your feet are on the ground in that dirt, in that box, that's where the IQ develops. I think we have a, really, a lot of really high IQ guys on our team, particularly the, uh, the guy who everyone thinks of is, is Yachty. Yachty wants it upstairs, they start the runner, that's why he wanted it there. That is all that man right there, number four, he knew what was happening. With Yacht, it's, it's the, the things that you are in, that don't go on the stat sheet that he does or he sees and you know how he might move somebody or the way he might you know get a pitcher to pitch around somebody or get him to do something that you might look at in the moment and be like what's he like what's he doing and but then it, 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 it makes sense I mean, he just sees everything on the field and definitely able to learn a lot just from seeing the way he goes about the game just like our veteran core you know learning from Yachty and Goldie and Arenado those guys are great to learn from and they love sharing their wisdom you know obviously on the bench when you're not playing or you know, you're in the dugout on offense and you're watching the game, paying attention to the little things, you know, and obviously talking, communicating. That's one thing Goldie's really great at. He talks to everyone about the game. He probably, he probably learns something from everyone. Doesn't matter how old you are, how, how long your experiences have been up there in the big leagues. He's constantly communicating, finding ways to get better. So to be able to make a decision very quickly and, you know, let your instincts take over um, and just make a really smart play, I mean, I think that's what, what can stand out for a guy with a high baseball IQ. Zach Thompson made his Major League debut at Wrigley Field on June 3rd, picking up the save in his first big league appearance. Let's get to know the 2019 first rounder a little bit better. With the 19th selection of the 2019 MLB draft, the St. Louis Cardinals select Zach Thompson, a left-handed pitcher from the University of Kentucky. Jason Isringhausen. You know, our, our relationship kind of started, uh, you know, from the draft in 2019. He was there. He was the one that that uh, answered the phone, and he's he's really been kind of a mentor to me ever since I signed. Uh, he was around a lot last season, and I've seen him a lot this spring. Big league camp's great. I mean, you get to, to work out with the big league guys, the big league staff, just see how those guys go about their business, face them in lives, and get good feedback, and it's been really great. And Zach Thompson, welcome to the big leagues. He's rated in the top five of Cardinal prospects. Swing and a miss. And the first strikeout in the career of Zach Thompson here in the big leagues. And a strikeout for Thompson. His first ever at Bush Stadium. There's nothing like baseball. It's hard to describe that feeling, uh, you know, that, that batter, batter pitcher confrontation. There's, there's nothing like it in sports. The 2-2. Zach Thompson. Four innings out of the bullpen, and the Cardinals roll to a 14-5 win. Thompson, in his Major League debut, picks up the save. Aggressive. You know, I'm out there pitching like uh, nobody in the stands has ever seen me throw before. Um, you know, I've got something to prove, and 
Uh, I, I want to put on a good performance for the fans. And this year, just focusing on uh, perfecting my own process, um, staying committed to my process, and just, uh, you know, the results will show themselves. I don't have to, to push for it. Just, just go about my business every day and, and handle it like a professional. And after the break... And the guy was gone for a decade. It's amazing. We update you on Albert Pujols' pursuit of history. Then later in the show... I had never been on a streak like that ever in my life at any level. I was, I was surprising myself. Bo Hard sits down at the insider desk to relive a summer that none of us will ever forget. Stay with us. It seems like every day brings a new milestone for Albert Pujols. Let's take a look at some of his biggest accomplishments in recent weeks. Albert Pujols continues to make history during his final season. Here are some of the most recent notable numbers and achievements. Albert Pujols and playing in his 3,000 third game today. On June 9th, Albert doubled in the second inning at Tampa Bay to move into ninth on MLB's all-time hit list with 3,320. And it drops in, and Pujols will wind up at second base. His appearance in that game also made him eighth in games played with 3,002 all-time. Then there's total bases. Pujols is rarefied air in this category too. His May 26 hit moved him into sole possession for third most all-time in Major League history with 6,072. Rocket is right. That's exactly what this was off the bat of Albert Pujols, 109 miles per hour. Two more milestones came on June 14th with Albert's start in game one of a doubleheader. He moved past Kurt Flood for seventh most games played in Cardinals history with his 1,739th career appearance. Since he started the game at first, he also tied Jim Bottomley for most games played as a first baseman in team history. It was Albert's 1,340th time manning first base for St. Louis. And the guy was gone for a decade. It's amazing. Albert just keeps serving up history in a summer none of us will soon forget. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Emily Stevens. Straight ahead, we catch up with fan favorite Bo Hart. You know, I was trying to hit the first strike that I saw um, that was straight and uh, just try to put a good swing on it. That's after the break, so stay with us. No place takes you in depth with the Cardinals like our YouTube channel. Get to know the players. Come along for one of a kind experiences and hang out with personalities from across Cardinals Nation. Plus, we capture the days and moments that make Cardinals baseball so special. Just search St. Louis Cardinals on YouTube and be sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. St. Louis Cardinals baseball. In 2003, Bo Hart put together one of the best streaks in baseball history. He began his big league career with a 328 average in his first 30 games. That included a 460 clip through his initial 10 contests. St. Louis quickly fell in love with the scrappy infielder. And our Brett McMillan sat down with Bo to talk about his career. It's always good to have a Cardinals alum in the building, and that is Bo Hart, played with the Redbirds in 2003 and 2004. And Bo, I'm sure you get the question all the time, but how often does somebody come up to you in Memphis or here in St. Louis and say, are you that Bo Hart? You know, it does happen often, and uh, like I tell everybody, it's, I get to relive the moments that I had here at Bush Stadium and in St. Louis, and, and uh, I do enjoy telling the story. 412 was the batting average. I was looking at the numbers. I mean, they are crazy. In the first seven or eight games, it's a Ted Williams type batting average. You rattle off a hit in your first seven big league games. How do you stay out of your own head when you're in a situation like that coming up into, into the show? You know, I uh, didn't know what to expect of myself or of the major league pitching or whatever. I just went out and, and tried to 
see good pitches and take the advice I was getting from all the veterans and to try to put a good swing on it. And, and they were falling. I, I was I was a little bit lucky, too. Oh, were you looking at video then, 2003-04? That was kind of maybe when that stuff was starting, but was that at all part of what was happening when you came in? Um, there was a little bit, but uh, not much. It was more word of mouth from the veterans on the team, and they were sharing their knowledge, and, and I was trying to apply it as best I could, and, and uh, it worked out a little bit. Obviously, you're working your whole life, your whole baseball career to get to that moment, but were you a little surprised maybe about just how hot of a start it was? Of course, of course. I had never been on a streak like that ever in my life at any level um, to have that many hits, uh, you know, and, and then to remember those first 10 games where majority of them happened. Um, yeah, it was I, was, I was surprising myself. You mentioned, I mean, you see the ball, hit the ball a little bit, you know, a fastball guy, that was where a lot of your success was. Was that all you sat on for a month there, basically? I think so, you know, and then the pitchers made their adjustments and exposed some weaknesses, and then I had to make adjustments, and that's the back and forth game of baseball. But, um, you know, I was trying to hit the first strike that I saw um, that was straight and uh, just try to put a good swing on it. 03 was right on the doorstep of that 04, 05, 06 run, a World Series in there, a couple of pennants. So you were around a lot of really, really good baseball players. Who was the, the guy that maybe had the most impact on you in that clubhouse? I think, uh, well, Jim Edmonds and Scott Rowland were, were great off the field. Um, on the field, I think... Uh, you know, I really liked how Scott played the game. He played the game right. Uh, I, I tried to emulate them, you know, even though you're in the big leagues and you know, you, you're, you're peers, you do try to learn from, from your teammates, especially the ones that have been around a long, uh, long time. So I just, I enjoy being around them. And, and again, just try to play the game right. I, I, I read this and I don't remember it, but confirm for me, third at bat at Bush Stadium, you got a standing ovation. Is that true? And tell us just about that moment and how it unfolded. I think, uh, yeah, I think I, I did. I, I, my first two hits, uh, I, you know, I'm just running around the bases and not really kind of um, soaking it in. But I got a standing ovation going to the plate. I ended up striking out, and the fans were st stayed on their feet. And even though I struck out and walked back to, back to the dugout, they were still standing and clapping. And, and uh, yeah, I'll never forget that moment. That winter when you go back to Santa Cruz, what was that like? Because I can just imagine that people in your community were going nuts that summer. W what was it like for you to go back? You know, um, obviously friends come out of the trees and, and uh, off the beach. Uh, they they, they want to show their appreciation. And hey, I, I remember when you got called up, that type of thing. And, and, and I appreciated those stories. Um, but, you know, I, I, again, I didn't try to get too um, confident uh, in the community that I lived in. I tried to just be myself and got a lot of encouragement. And they said, keep doing what you're doing and we'll keep watching. And then we'll finish on this. You've got two little ones running around now, young, young kids, obviously weren't around when you were playing in the big leagues. But to be able to bring them back here on a day like this and show them this and allow them to see this part of your story, just what's that meant to you? Yeah, it means everything to my wife, uh, Lydia, and I uh, to bring Cruz and his uh, little brother, Brock, um, to Bush Stadium and to see the fans and, and uh, to share some of the back, you know, the behind the scenes kind of moments that uh, that they didn't get to when I was playing. Um, it, it's nice that I get invited to, to show them a little bit what Cardinal Nation is all about. He's Bo Hart. I'm Brett McMillan. He was here for a Budweiser bash. If you want to find out about the great Cardinals alumni that come through, head on over to cardinals.com slash Bud Bash. That's all for right now here at the Insider Desk. When we return... Swing and hello, 4th of July. Take a ride on that knockdown pitch, big boy. Here a classic Albert Pujols home run call from a 4th of July at Wrigley. Cardinals Insider is a team effort, and that includes you. We'd love to hear from you. To get in touch with the show, head on over to cardinals.com slash insider and click on the Contact Us tab. And while you're there, you can rewatch old episodes and check out our podcast too. It's all at cardinals.com slash insider. Baseball and the 4th of July belong together. Albert Pujols provided his own fireworks on Independence Day 2003. Cubs ace Kerry Wood knocked him down. Then Albert responded with some fireworks of his own. Here's the next by Wood. Is up and in and back to the screen, and Albert Pujols is uh, knocked down. He doesn't even look at the uh, mound. 
He uh, darn near injured himself as he had to uh, avoid that pitch. I would not love to see number 25 off of Albert's bat go into the street. The pitch. Swing and hello, 4th of July. Take a ride on that knockdown pitch, big boy. Terry Wood knocked him down, and now Albert looks at him as he goes around first. He gives him a glare. Say, take a little whip of that, big boy. And now, Kerry Wood takes a look at Albert as he touches them all. Give it to him, big boy. Give it to him. That's how you play baseball. When you're a professional like Albert is, you just take the next pitch and you hit it into the uh, seats. Big brothers, big sisters, partners, mentors, and young people with the goal of changing the tide of economic inequality and systemic racism. They held a special event at Bush Stadium earlier this summer to raise funds and awareness for the cause. Hi, everybody. This is Bill DeWitt, president of the St. Louis Cardinals. I'd like to welcome everybody to Bush Stadium. What a great event, huh? We are here tonight to raise money for Big Brothers and Big Sisters. But all of us have been around uh, the nonprofit fundraising circuit for a long time in events. And so at Big Brothers and Big Sisters, I was trying to figure out another way to do something really fun that a lot of people would enjoy. And so we kind of just came up with a model that says, let's pick a really cool place to have an event. Let's make it competitive. Let's make it um, something that reminds everyone what our mission is about, and it's a child's game. And so we're like, well, the coolest thing in town right now is Cardinals. Uh, we need to raise money. It can be rock, paper, scissors, and it can just be a ridiculous idea. So we're out here tonight trying to raise a million dollars, and we're getting pretty close. The idea was that anybody that was walking in the rain would want to play, and anyone would have a really good sense of humor about it. A brand new event like this, you never know what's going to happen. Cardinals have been a long time partner with Big Brothers and Big Sisters. I honestly have lost count. I mean, it's 15 plus years. Bill has always been supportive. How does it feel to be the champion of the first ever battle at Bush of rock, paper, scissors? Incredible, incredible. When we return, I'm answering one of your questions. It's Ask Ozzy, and it's up next. There's something truly special about St. Louis Cardinals baseball, and we have the perfect companion to all the action. The 2022 Cardinals Media Guide is a deep dive into the team that includes bios, stats, and background info on everyone from stars to prospects. It's the perfect keepsake as we celebrate the storied careers of three Cardinals legends. Get yours today at cardinals.com slash media guide, or stop by the Cardinals team store inside Bush Stadium. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Anthony in St. Louis asks, would you ever want to be a manager? Well, I gave some thought to it and uh, when I retired in, in 1996, I think that it's hard if you are away from the game for three or four years. I never had the desire to be a manager, but you know, as time went on, I, I thought about it because I was asked for, by so many people, well, why did I not go into management? But I, you know, I felt that at the time, it was just time for me to get away from the game, and I think I stayed away from the game too long to actually take on the challenge of being a manager. And I think it's very hard sometimes for players who've achieved a lot to, to be good managers, because to be able to deal with people not approaching the game the same way that you did. And uh, I think that that's been the problem for a lot of guys who have been great players. Uh, come out and, and be good managers. I've thought about it, but uh, I think the time has passed. You spend your whole half of your life, you know, sitting in the dugout with the uniform on, you know. So being around the guys, I think, is what's most important and sharing um, your experiences and stuff. And, uh, you know, I do have guys come up to me while we're sitting there and ask questions about what it was like when, uh, when, when I played. Thanks for the question, Anthony. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com slash insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. But for now, stay with us. There's more Cardinals Insider after the break. We all have our favorite 4th of July traditions. 
That includes the players. What are they? Let's find out in this week's Ask a Cardinal. Fireworks, for sure. Fireworks and growing out. Old school American 4th of July. I like lighting off fireworks. I like, you know, fireworks in general. So just your traditional fireworks show. I like the little, little street fireworks. I know they're kind of corny, but like you go out and throw poppets and light sparklers and uh, some of the little like spinning ones that light up on the ground are pretty cool. We used to go to my lake house 4th of July all the time. And uh, we used to light up Roman candles, but uh, my brother was had the smart idea of taping all the Roman candles together, so it ended up being like a Gatlin gun of Roman candles, and it became a tradition for a very long time. Yeah, there's always fireworks and barbecue, so you know we'd cook hamburgers, hot dogs, and either light off fireworks or go watch fireworks, and I mean, we get to do it with baseball too, so I get to get to keep it going. The beach, fireworks, hot dogs, boat, you know marshmallows, lemonade, just the great American experience. Just barbecuing out, throwing some burgers and hot dogs on the grill and going out. Actually, I mean, for being from San Diego, I guess it would be going to the beach. We used to go barbecue, go to the pool when we were younger with the family and, you know, hot dogs, burgers, and uh, my dad playing dominoes and smoking some Cuban cigars. Play a baseball game? <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I've done for since I was 18, was play a baseball game on the 4th of July, so. About all I know. Yeah, I feel like every 4th of July I've always been playing baseball, so that's pretty much the main thing. Making homemade ice cream at our, our family friend's house. We'd go over there um, after we'd hang out and then go over there and they'd make us stir the whatever it is, stir the thing. So, And then uh, the adults would just watch us and you know have their adult sodas while we just kind of stirred and did all the work. Fireworks, for sure. I'm trying to blow stuff up. That's all for this week. You can always catch past episodes at cardinals.com slash insider or on YouTube. For everyone involved with the show, I'm Ozzie Smith, and we'll see you right back here next week.